Hello student, this video is about IFRS 16 leasing. And in this video, we'll talk about the uh, first aspect of lease accounting that is in the books of lessee. And uh, as you know that uh, the accounting standard in leasing is always a very controversial accounting standards and it's continuously changing. First of all, it was IES 17 and now it has been changed as IFRS 16. And there is also differences now between IFRS and US GAAP as well. So we'll cover this uh, with the further uh, series of lectures on IFRS 16, uh, discussing different aspect of IFRS 16 uh, in a series of lectures. So first of all, the first lecture in which we will discuss the basics of IFRS 16 and especially the accounting treatment for the lessee. So what is a lease contract? A lease is a contract or part of a contract that convey the right to use an asset. The, the important thing is that when you are getting an asset on lease, you're getting a right to use asset. You're not buying that asset, rather the right to use an asset that is an underlying asset. And that is for a period of time, it's very important. It's not your asset, it's a right to use asset for a period of time. And you have to give something in exchange and that is called rent or rentals. This contract is between two parties. One, one of the party provides you the right to use asset. The other party is receiving the right to use asset. So the lessor is the entity that provides the right to use an underlying asset in exchange for consideration. For example, uh, you have entered with the bank to uh, have a lease contract regarding a car financing. So the bank is lessor and you as a client is called the lessee that obtains the right to use the underlying asset for a consideration. A right to use asset represents the lessee's right to use an underlying asset for the lease term. So as per this right to use definition, the lessee has the right to record it as an asset in the balance sheet as per the principle of substance over form. Although the legal owner is always the lessor, but as far as the substance over form principle is concerned, the, less, the lessee has the right throughout this lease term to recognize this in the balance sheet as an asset. Now there are two types of lease. One is called the operating lease and other is called the finance lease. But with respect to lessee, under IFRS 15, the classification criteria has been discontinued and now there is no distinguish, distinct, distinction between the operating lease and finance lease. Whatever is the lease, what is, whatever is the lease term, except for one exception, the lessee will record right to use asset as well as uh, a liability that is called the lease liability. So at the commencement of lease, when we start accounting in the books of lessee, we will record a right to use asset as well as a lease liability, whether lease is an operating lease or a finance lease. Now, initial measurement of assets and liabilities. Lease liability is initially measured at present value of lease payments that have not yet been paid. Very important. If you have paid in advance rental payment, down payment, you will not consider that in the calculation of the lease liability. Lease liability is what, what you have to pay in future, get the present value by the discounting formula and discount rate to be used is interest rate implicit in the lease. And if interest rate implicit in, in the lease is not given in the question that uh, the lessee's incremental borrowing rate is to be used. Similarly, the right to use asset calculation. Initially, the right to use asset is to be measured at cost. And normally under IS 16, IS 38, we will use the asset at initial measurement at cost. So this is the similar criteria and uh, how you can identify cost. Cost comprises of an amount of initial measurement of liability that we have just discussed. What you have to pay present value of future cash flows plus lease payment made at or before the commencement of lease any down payment any advance payment you have to add this plus any initial indirect cost incurred by the lessee 
any incidental cost plus estimated cost of removing or dismantling that asset if IS 37 allows you uh, and meets the definition of provision then you can add this present value of removing and dismantling cost into the uh, assets value right to use value what is lease term lease term is the length of time lessee has the right to use asset and it's normally uh, less than the life of the asset now in the example we'll identify the right to use asset and lease liability for example the commencement of a lease is 1st january 2014 lease term is five years per annum rental 75000 paid in advance on 1st january each year not at year end first payment has just been paid so now there are five rentals and one payment has been made in advance so leftover rentals are four useful life of asset is six years and lease arrangement fee paid by lessee is 15000 this is initial direct cost interest rate implicit in the lease is eight percent and uh, you have to discuss the initial accounting at 1st january 2014. so first of all uh, uh, lease uh, obligation or lease liability so what is lease liability so it's present value of future cash flows and in order to find out present value of future cash flows our rental payment is 75000 per annum 75000 per annum and uh, we have uh, future four payments required one is at the beginning of uh, 1st january 2005 6 7 and 8 so the the four payment criteria uh, uh, so you have to need a discount rate so at a discount rate of 8% you can apply annuity factor discount rate of 8% so the four year annuity factor at 8% is uh, 3.312. So PV is uh, cash flows 75,000 per annum multiplied by annuity factor. And uh, this will give you a value of 248,400. This is the value of lease liability. Now the right to use asset. So as per the valuation, right to use asset, first of all, the initial liability value, present value of future cash flows, that is 248,400. And uh, then the additional amount you have to calculate is uh, what we have to calculate. We have to add in value that is uh, 75,000 initial payment plus 1,500. So 75,000 is the rent advance 75,000 and uh, initial direct cost and that is 1500. So the assets value is 324,900, 324,900. Now what would the journal entry and that is right to use asset debit right to use asset debit by 324900 and uh, lease liability or lease obligation credit and uh, that is uh, 248400 so the payment that has been made is bank credit by 75,000 and 1500, 76,500. So this is the outflow and this is the initial accounting criteria. Now, the subsequent accounting measurement uh, of uh, right to use asset is typically the same. Either you can use the cost model or you can use the revaluation model. Or if this is an investment property, then you can use the fair value model as well. So subsequent measurement of right to use asset
So either you can use cost model under IA 16 or you can use revaluation model under IA 16 or if it is an investment property then in case of investment property you can use fair value model or cost model. If you use cost model, then it's original cost less accumulated depreciation. For calculation of depreciation, always remember that you have to compare lease term with useful life and consider lower of lease term and assets useful life. As usually, the lease term is uh, lower than the assets useful life. So normally, lease term it is to be utilized. If ownership of the asset transfer to the lessee at the end of the lease term, then depreciation should be charged over the useful life of the asset. Now, in case if you are using revaluation uh, method or uh, the revaluation model, then under IA 16, any change that is gain on revaluation is to be transferred in OCI. And if you are using the fair value model, then any gain or loss is to be transferred in profit and loss account. Uh, 